Hi everyone, my name is Raziel Kane and welcome to another voice actor spotlight. As stated in the description of my spotlight on Flynn Dilly, I want to take the voice actor spotlight further than Transformers G1 to try to shine a light on other iterations of the Transformers. But I'm not moving too far from it, since in my head, Beast Wars is the natural continuity of G1. And since this is my first Beast Wars spotlight, might as well start with the awesome leader of the Maximals, Optimus Primal. And by now, everybody knows that the fantastic Gary Chalk had everything to do with making this character a very memorable one. Now let me tell you a little bit about this impressive actor. Born on February 17, 1952 in Southampton, England, UK, his family emigrated to Canada in June 1957. Gary always wanted to perform, and at age 8 he did a play called The Elves and the Shoemaker. He also sang in the boys club choir on TV, and did a lot of other projects in school as he had the bug for performing. He did many odd jobs before realizing he wasn't cut out to be a stockbroker or a waiter, so he enrolled at university in hopes of becoming a teacher in English literature and anthropology. But it was then that he discovered the theater department. He loved the shows and really wanted to be a part of them. So we auditioned for said department at Studio 58 at Langara College in Vancouver. He got in and found his place. And the first time he got paid for a gig, he realized it could be how he made his livelihood and decided to become a professional actor. I also know he was in the military at some point because Patriot Prime chatted with him at TFCon Baltimore and they both talked about being artillery veterans. But I couldn't find traces of it online. Now let's take a look at Gary's roles, and there's a lot of them. He's listed for 292 roles from 117 cartoons, out of a total of 427 actors credit on IMDb. So of course, I won't be listing all of it, but I'll pull from his most iconic roles and the more popular shows. Now according to BehindTheVoiceActors.com, his first voice acting role was for the 1989 Dick version of G.I. Joe, voicing Pathfinder, Bioc, and Metalhead. But IMDB has his first role for a dubbing of the show Space Carrier Blue Noah, voicing the main character Captain Noah in 1979. But according to the man himself, his first cartoon was The Legend of Hiwata, voicing the title character. Maybe he was referring to an actual role rather than a voiceover, because to him, it's not the same thing. His first screen credited role was for the movie Mr. Patman, where he played a policeman. And that will become recurrent for him. He's been a representative of the law, or a military officer in many shows. Once, he asked a producer if they had a doctor, a psychologist, or a young lover he could play. The producer said, no, you look like every cop I know, so you're the cop. To him, it's both a blessing and a curse, because it does get him work, even if it's similar roles. But he enjoyed doing more varied roles. In the 80s, Gary appeared in a lot of movies and series, being used as an extra, and also guest starring in popular shows such as Airwolf, where he guest starred twice, The Fly 2, and playing three different characters on MacGyver. He also appeared in Wise Guy and Danger Bay. In cartoon, you heard him in Captain Anne the Game Master as King Hippo, but also as 16 guest characters. Moving to the 90s, on screen he guest starred in the series Highlander, Neon Rider, Cobra, Hawkeye, Mantis, The Comish, Sliders, Poltergeist The Legacy, Millennium, First Wave, Dead Man's Gun, Viper, and The Sentinel. On top of that, he did tons of TV movies, but my favorites are Generation X, where he played Detective Gaines, and Nick Fury, Agent of Shields, interpreting Dum Dum Dugan. In animation, he was extremely busy, but my favorites are his role in Bucky O'Hare and the Toad Wars, where he voiced Commander Dogstar and Al Negator, reprising the latter for the video game. He worked on Conan the Adventurer in the role of Conan's father, Snag, Gora, and Torinon as well as playing seven guest characters on the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. On the series Reboot, the mother of all computer animated shows, he voiced Slash, Holy moly. Turbo, Al's Waiter, and 20 other characters. Of course, Beast War was the show that cemented him in our own personal Hall of Fame. Gary used to do a lot of TV and radio commercials, and worked for Hasbro on TV ads for Generation 2 toys. While he was working for Mainframe, they got the contract for Beast Wars, and he first auditioned for the part of Megatron. But eventually he got the part of Optimus Primal, warming up the character, making him sound more human, coming across as a father figure. I will not give an order I would not be willing to do myself! But I was capable of giving you better cover fire. You were not. He felt that he had to sound real, 
not a machine or a treated voice. And I think it worked perfectly since Optimus Primal had very different relationships with each crew member as a father would. He's really happy with the role, but did admit he was disappointed with a turn it took in Beast Machine, like replacing the iconic shut up rat trap with no choose a wiser path. Something I didn't know, he's the one who voiced the original Megatron when Beast War Megatron is playing the golden disc hidden message for Covert Agent Ravage. Gary also voiced 24 characters on Extreme Dinosaurs, including Bad Rap, and he voiced Commander Medstar and Emperor Femur on Shadow Raiders. He then worked on Sonic Underground, voicing Dr. Robotnik and six guest roles. As mentioned earlier, he voiced Optimus Primal in Beast Machine and... We appreciate the offer, but perhaps you should sit this one out. It'll be hard enough for us to survive in there with all of the Citadel's automated defenses. Also, the Optimus Prime hologram. In video games, he reprised the role of Slash in three more for Reboot, and Optimus Primal in Transformers Beast Wars Transmetal. Then we hit the 2000 and he's not less busy. On screen he got a few recurring roles, like in Beggars and Choosers where he played Lieutenant Mosh, or in Dark Angel as Lieutenant Walter Eastep. On Cold Squad he portrayed Inspector Andrew Polichok, while on The Dead Zone he performed the role of James Stilson. And of course, in Stargate SG-1, you've seen him in the memorable role of Colonel Chekhov. He actually had to learn Russian for that role. For the animation industry, you heard him on Action Man as Gangrene, the 2002 He-Man and Masters of the Universe as Men at Arms, and seven guest roles. Then he went on to play Optimus Prime for Transformers Armada, Energon, and Cybertron. When he got the role of Optimus Prime in the Unicron trilogy, the studio wanted him to do Peter Cullen's Optimus, but he refused. He compromised by making him less human, a little more truck. To the Decepticons, they are nothing but slaves. He did many other voices like in 321 Penguins, 2002's Treasure Island as Captain Billy Bones, six roles on Class of Titans, and various roles in a few Barbie computer animated productions. And I have to mention that he played in my favorite series of all time, Supernatural in the episode Movie Monster, where he played Sheriff Dietrich. The next decade had recurring roles on screen for him, such as Lieutenant Michael Oakes in The Killing, Sheriff Troy Davis in Setter Grove, Deputy Ken Hills in Blackstone, Mayor Bascom in Murder, She Baked, Lieutenant General G.J. Walker in Arrow, and Arvid Knudsen in Unspeakable. For cartoons, he was involved in My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, as All Aboard, Prince Rutherford, and Fido the Diamond Dog. He also portrayed Forge Ferris in four Max Steel animated movie and played Killo in three Lego Ninjago TV shows. On Voltron Force, he played Sky Marshal Wade, Manset, and Bouncer, while on Superbook, he played eight characters. And recently, you could have seen him as Roger on The Now, Herb in Day of the Dead, Connie Edwin Harris in Tribal, and he just finished wrapping production on a movie called Colorblind, where he'll co star as Walton. Also in recent cartoons, he's Woody in Monster Beach, as well as Gordy in Chip and Potato. Gary once said in an interview that he loves voice acting because it's the purest form of acting. You have to fill in everything, from your geographical to your emotional, so that they can draw around your voice. The upside is that you don't have to dress up or memorize script, so it makes it much easier. And working with his fellow castmate was a laugh riot. The downside is that you no longer record with your fellow actor. Gary is a fantastic actor and his tips on voice actings are amazing. How to him it's all about which resonator in your body you place the voice. Check the link in the description. He's amazing at explaining how to figure out the voices of a character, starting with the laugh. Gary is very active in conventions, appearing on panels and voice acting classes. And he's also a well-established musician. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of Gary Chalk's career. If you did, please like, subscribe and hit the bell. Also leave a comment, I really like reading you guys. Keep coming back, I have more on the way. And